What's up guys, it's Drake, and this is the Dark Zone Mark II. Everybody's trying to tell me it's got some Desert Eagle vibes. I'm not explicitly seeing that, but maybe that's just because I, you know, have a lot of familiarity with that platform in particular. This is a seriously compact pistol that delivers the hits. Doing about 130 to 120 with the bamboo half links that it comes with. This half length exclusive blaster will pump up the jam all the way up to 150 FPS when using the Adventure Force Pro Darts. Maybe it's just a tighter barrel choke. We're going to find out today because what we haven't done yet is crack this guy open, taking a look at the internals, seeing if there's any like quality of life improvements that could be made uh, in particular to like perhaps the safety or the slide. Overall, a very compact a very nifty secret spy kind of pistol. Uh, I don't think that we need to play with the speed loaders too terribly much. They seem excellent out of the package. This opens up a wealth of world for uh, accessories and opportunities there, but we want to take it apart, see if we can't squeeze a little bit more power out of it, and then most importantly, like uh, see what we can uh, do to it internally, mechanism-wise. It's very straightforward, it's very streamlined, and it's, hard, and it's hard to imagine getting more than 150 out of something this small. However, we're here to try. We're going to do our best. Let's take it downstairs. Let's put it on the workbench and let's start the surgery. All right, guys, so I've primed this and taken half of the slide off. After I removed those three screws all the same side and I pulled the slide off, I found a few interesting things. One, this is attached to the plunger. On the other side, there is a single screw holding that bad boy in. Two, this is our prime lock. What this is is when you come in and you load once, you cannot go again while the blaster is primed. The priming indicator is just part of the plunger rod. When you fire, Looks a lot like that. This plunger tube is tiny compared to what I'm used to. It's very, very unusual, very surreal. I actually think this is a pretty good lock. I'm gonna keep this lock around as far as getting this off goes. Should be one screw. Again, all the same size, very convenient. And then this comes off. The lock is integral uh, to this. This bar does not come out, so. I would just leave that in exactly like that. It gives you a good look at the internals. As far as the blaster itself goes, we have more screws to take out. Um, none of them were hidden. There's nothing under the slide. Let's go. All right, so when I tried to undo these, I heard something go clink clink inside. It's still clink clinking. It's whatever these lock into. There appear to be no hidden screws. There's four up top, two down here, and one in the back. I think this is the clip that's giving me trouble back here in opening this guy up. I think there's a small plastic clip back there, and then it appears that this has to be popped off as well. I'm gonna grab a flathead screwdriver and do that now. All right guys, so the sound of things falling out were these two itty bitty uh, hexes. Those hexes go back in here. They're mirrored on each side. Once they're in like that, you can tell that their sole and exclusive purpose in this life is to hold the only unique uh, screws in place so that your die cast side panel, which adds that nice uh, tactile feel and weight, um, stays stay solid. Definitely, definitely, definitely do not take these screws out unless you're taking the entire blaster apart because then you're going to wind up with screws and, or not screws, but you're going to wind up with nuts in this area uh, impacting your follower. So how this blaster works is the follower down here has this internal magazine. This is actually pretty, uh, pretty nice, pretty proprietary. There's a curly cue down here at the end of the, the spring, the like ladder spring, and that uh, holds this in place so that it stays relatively stable. And then there's actually a second one um, up inside here, which holds the follower in place so that this has a hard time uh, going much of anywhere. Then the blaster itself has a spring rest in the back here. That spring rest doubles as the catch mechanism. Honestly, pretty beefy catch. Nothing, uh, nothing that I would change there unless we go completely extreme with our spring replacement. Then we have a full anodized, uh, even though you'll never see it, an anodized metal barrel, which is quite nice. The trigger lock only is engaged when the plunger is forward. The plunger, of course, being the breech itself. So this comes back and forward like so. Uh, when it's back like this, this comes back 
and you can't pull the trigger. We're gonna remove this lock entirely. Let's go ahead and take the barrel out so that you guys can see more of what's going on there. It looks like there's a, a taper to help you chamber darts in here. And then this is just a cap that helps you uh, kind of align everything and keep it tight in there. So we can set that aside. This is your trigger return spring. This is your safety. Uh, when it's engaged, the trigger can't pull back. When it's not engaged, it can't. Uh, we're just gonna delete this entirely. I believe we're gonna create a safety delete for that bad boy. Um, again, I think that we're gonna remove the trigger lock entirely, which makes depriming a lot easier. And in order to do that, we're gonna take this screw out, pull this piece, and then underneath the assembly, there's this piece, and then there is a completely separate under the hole. Here, let me pull the plunger system out. And then this is our kind of, the follower comes up into this. Like I said, there's double torsion springs on each side. This is just very nice, very smooth. Not only does it serve to keep the darts in very well, it also allows for full breach uh, by the plunger system. Push this through, Whoop. pull our trigger out. And as kind of expected, this blaster is sort of a puzzle uh, in that it just has a lot going on uh, inside. So we're gonna try a couple of different spring replacements. We'll let you know how that goes. We have designed a safety delete for this guy that I'm excited to test fit over at foamproshop.com. Uh, the way that this slide goes together, I think that we can get a different version of our claw. It's not the exact same as an Aeon, but we should be able to fit a claw in there. I don't think that it's necessary for this blaster, but if you want, it'll be an option. Uh, not fooling with the grips, like I said, and we're gonna play with the spring just a little bit. The plunger itself is in fact a somewhat padded, it's like very light, this is a rubber padding, and you've got a dart sort of gate in there, and then this plunger head is removable, I believe. No, that's all one piece of plastic. I think the screw just holds on the padding, and then through the back you can get uh, anything you want on there. Uh, it also looks like if you ever wore it out, it is symmetrical so that you could flip it over. That's a nice touch. Spring is very beefy. I think a spamp spring will probably work uh, here. All right, guys, so we tried three different springs and we were having a really rough time of it. Of note, we tried a retaliator spring that was upgraded. We tried our in-house, we have a Spamp Ocho spring, uh, which is really similar to this. And then we tried a Turf eight kilograms and they usually go low on their rating and then high on their power. I like their stuff a lot. Uh, ultimately, you can see here, it's very similar to the stock spring, but it has like an extra coil and a half. We got lower results with all the springs. Um, it was a little unfortunate. We just can't figure out why even putting what theoretically is more power in was getting us lower results with different darts. So we decided to scrap that. We're gonna keep the stock spring. We're gonna go through our development cycle that we used over at Foam Pro Shop to get the Aeon springs that you guys know and love, the Chungus and the Uwu spring. And we're gonna see if we can't come up with something that way. But for the purposes of getting these internals and this mod guide out along with uh, some pretty interesting parts that we have developed, I don't wanna fool with that at all. I wanna move right into uh, what we have done. So we've removed that lock there and we're gonna start reassembling. But in the process of reassembling, we have two things. Uh, this was a big hit with the Aeon. This is a claw. It press fits in the slide, in this kind of gap where the mold release was, just like that. Gives you a little bit more to prime up against. I uh, don't know if it's like necessarily my favorite way to use the Mark II. I think that it, while it doesn't affect whether or not you can use the holster, it definitely affects how it feels in the holster. But it is an option if you're interested. Uh, and then the big one is I get tired of having to remember if my safety is on or off. There's the fire side and the safe side. So we created a shorter one over at Foam Pro Shop. Uh, it's pretty handsome. It's using our uh, DRAC exclusive orange. It's got an itty bitty fang signature in there. Uh, if you don't like that, I'm sorry, tough. Uh, but that's gonna go over here. It's got a shorter throw than the original one. So it should be effectively a quote unquote safety delete. Uh, other than that, we're just gonna reassemble the blaster and show you what it looks like. Uh, we've got one more trick up our sleeve, but this is less a mod guide because we had a really hard time with the springs and more of an internals overview, so to speak.
moving on, we've uh, developed kind of a rough draft for what we want to be doing with our attachments. These will be available on Foam Pro Shop. We're working on a couple of different uh, varieties. This one's the just dual riser. It takes Pictini at the bottom, turns it into Pictini at the bottom, plus Pictini at the top. This is if you want like a laser and a light, or a light and a laser, or a foregrip. We're not that tactic cool on this channel, but it's an option. Also, if you happen to find that that stock orange kind of rail attachment is too much for you, maybe you want something a little less Desert Eagle and a little more, I don't know, Glockish. Pick a smaller sidearm, I suppose. We've got a stubby version that still gives you plenty of orange, goes ahead and deletes that rail for a nice smooth profile, and then kind of mirrors the aesthetic of the original up top. Uh, other than that, the safety delete is just ultra, ultra smooth. You never have to worry about pulling it out of your holster being like, wait, click, did I do it? Oop, nope, trigger lock. Um, so the safety delete is gone. You can now also comfortably deprime the blaster. It's a lot easier than fooling around with that lock. Uh, other than that, I mean, Safety delete's great, smooth muzzle is cool. We're gonna be adding a quad version of this in the coming few days, trying to catch a Black Friday wave. We do have a Black Friday sale coming on the shop. I'd be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity to shill just a little bit, uh, but that Black Friday sale will be happening very, very soon. You should take a look at it over at foamproshop.com, especially if while we're all waiting to get our uh, Mark IIs in December, um, I see no reason why we can't have these items up and live for you, at least these ones right now, if you'd like to get your hands on them early if you know that you're going to be picking up a Mark II. The claw is really like, people are either gonna love it or hate it. Um, most people I feel like aren't necessarily gonna want this, but it's nice to offer it in a bundle so that we're not overcharging for tiny parts. Uh, you get the safety delete and the claw in one. It does let you prime different ways. I still prime like this, but you can also prime like that. Quite nice, I mean, it's just, Different strokes. The people who like the claw really seem to like the claw based on our Aeon feedback. Uh, I definitely like it with the Chungus spring, but with an Uwu spring, it's not my favorite. Um, <laughs> you got me feeling like Francis Marion over here dodging bullets with the ponytail. Um, anyway, that's our Mark II mod guide. Realistically, this time, more of an internals overview just because there's lo not a lot to modify in this guy. I mean, you could just remove the safety entirely and you'd have a hole in your blaster. If you have no interest in our parts, there's nothing wrong with the original Prime. And it's got a really good barrel to plunger volume to spring constant ratio as is. Like I said, we're gonna do a little more development on it. We're gonna see if we can't come back to the drawing board with something nicer, uh, but a lot of what people are going to do to this blaster I feel like is cosmetic because I can't believe I'm saying this, like it's already really, really good uh, out of the package. It's got a lot going on in all the right places. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you have a happy holiday and uh, I'll see you next time. Much love. Blast on. Track out.